So plans are changing, which plans seem to like to do. Um, I got the call that they are switching up my mom's treatment. So there's a, there's a decent chance that this new chemo is gonna have some harsher side effects. And going into the winter, we feel that it's better to be you know, an hour or two from where my mom's gonna be getting care in Boston and where my littlest sister lives, she's also in Boston. Um, rather than five or six hours up here if the weather is good and there isn't any traffic. So we are getting prepped to go do some real cold weather sailing and we are gonna make our way down to Massachusetts so that we are closer to my mom's where she's getting her treatment and closer to my sister. So we're there to you know, just be there and help out. So that leads us to trying to find a spot down there for the winter for Arabella. And we're doing it kind of late in the game and under fairly short notice. So we are hoping that maybe some of you have some advice of where we can hole up for the winter down there. So we are up here in Camden and Penobscot Bay and my sister and my mom are gonna be here in Boston. So that is quite a long drive. Uh, so we are gonna come down the coast. We're not gonna do it in one shot. We're gonna do it over a couple days. And where we would ultimately like to end up is a bit south of Boston. So our ideal would be some place with some winter dockage where we could tie up to a dock. Uh, it'll be easier coming and going and maybe leaving the boat for a while, but we are open to an anchorage or a mooring if there's a dock <clears throat> close by because we got to take a kiva into shore and all that jazz but if you uh if you have a good recommendation or some sort of connection send us an email and we'd love to love to hear your thoughts when we did a video a few weeks back about the rapid disappearance of the zinc anode on the prop shaft and the dangers that poses to arabella it attracted the attention of one of the foremost authorities in marine electrical systems, Nigel Calder, who reached out and wanted to come by to help Steve track down the problem. Okay. Um, so anyway, we'll take a look and see if we can figure something out. Yeah, I look forward to it. All right, 9 a.m. on Monday. Can't wait. All right, see you then. Thanks, Nigel. Bye. Okay. Good day. All right. Are you guys good? I'm glad to meet you guys. Well, you are uh, living aboard all winter. That's the plan. You got plenty of heat. Uh, the wood stove's going, and I gotta finish hooking up the um, Dickinson diesel heater. Uh -huh. So between the two, we should be in pretty good shape. You know, we had an Ingrid. That's what I've heard. Yeah, uh, a glass the, uh, one, right? Yeah, we bought the hull, but it had no deck, no ballast. Okay. Um, and we we built it from that. Well, here we can take a quick spin around. Yeah, yeah we're sitting a little low because they planked her in uh, oak notice. instead of cedar. Oh. Yeah. How much ballast did you put on? Uh, about 9,500 pounds or so. Yeah, we only put on 7,700, I think. Oh, wow. Uh, and then with the heavy deck. Yeah. And uh, two double box section spars. Okay. Yeah, the it's mizzen is solid, <laughs> and the main is <laughs> sort of hollow in the middle. It's mostly solid. Uh huh, yeah. Beautiful. I can't believe you've got from scratch. Oh, thanks. And with no previous experience. Right, watch that line behind you. Yes. You've either got to be very courageous or very stupid. Uh, a little bit of both. <laughs> That's a sailor's bag right there. You find right. a good one you like. You just Right, it. right. Just keep patching it up. Well, all the pockets are the right size and in the right place. <laughs> just go on down. On yeah. Thing. Hello. What's your name? That's Ernest. <laughs> Welcome to my... Humble about. Yeah. That's quite the workshop you've got there. It is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And how many years have you been doing this? 
Uh, I cut down the first tree January of 2016. Seven, that's pretty good. Yeah, and yeah. then we launched wow. in June. Yeah, that is quite amazing, actually. Everybody on YouTube wants to know what took so long. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I don't normally do um, electrical straight current corrosion surveys. It's been years since I've done one, but I bought some equipment. And the first thing we need to do is find out a bit more about your electrical system. Y you have a shore power, do you? Uh, it is, I have it, but it has never been used. Oh, well, that's, that gets rid of one issue. Um, but that's a common uh, cause of uh, zinc loss. Okay. Because you have a, a grounding conductor in the AC circuit that comes from the dock onto the boat. And if your boat is properly wired, that circuit is also connected to the water through yeah. your DC grounding system. And then uh, when somebody else plugs in, you all get connected into a common loop. Okay. And whoever's got the, the least galvanic corrosion resistant metal loses it to the other boats, mm. uh, which would be the zincs on the boat first and then whatever's next in the hierarchy, so to speak. Yeah. Um, I have a. A silver, silver chloride half cell here. Well, first of all, before we get there, let's yep. let's talk about a couple of things in your video. Okay. Um, get me educated. Well, <laughs> because we've got <laughs> we have galvanic corrosion yes. and we have stray current corrosion, and they're, yep. they're two in basically entirely separate um, issues. With galvanic corrosion, it, it's the metals in the circuit that are causing the electrical current that's yep. causing the corrosion. With straight current, you're imposing a current from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. With the uh, galvanic corrosion, whichever metal is uh, most susceptible to corrosion is going to corrode first. Uh, with straight current, uh, the, the position of the metals in the galvanic table is totally irrelevant. Okay. It's the one, uh, if we Assume that the current is moving from positive to negative. Um, of course, the electrons are going the other way, but it's easier to visualize it like that. Um, whichever one is discharging the positive current into the water to get to the other metal is going to corrode. Okay. Uh, irrespective of what the metal is. So you can stick a piece of bronze into salt water and a zinc, and you can wire a battery charger with the positive to the bronze and then have the negative on the, on the zinc, and the bronze will, bronze will get corroded. Okay. So your zinc loss is, is unlikely to be stray current corrosion. Okay. Because for that to be stray current corrosion, you're posit you'd have to have some kind of a positive circuit through the prop shaft to the zinc and then back to battery negative through the water. And um, it's fairly hard to visualize how that might happen, um, particularly since you've got, you, you were thinking it's the alternator but your alternator has got that big ground strap on it. Mm -hmm. So it's got a direct path to battery negative. And then you've got another ground strap from the engine, I think, back to battery negative. Mm -hmm. So if you were getting leakage from the alternator into the engine block or whatever, it's got a very direct path back to battery negative, and it's not very likely it's gonna go through the prop shaft, and through the zinc, and then through the water, and then, um, you know, where's it gonna come, come back, back since you don't have bonded through holes? Yeah, okay. Um, so I don't think you have Stray current corrosion. I think you've got just a fairly rapid galvanic corrosion. Okay. Um, but we can run some tests yeah. to check on that. Perfect. Which would be kind of interesting to do anyway. I haven't done these tests in years. <laughs> <laughs> just think, other than for uh, at seminars and stuff, this thing hasn't been in the, in the water for real testing in, in probably a decade. It's called a silver silver chloride half cell. And when you, uh, when you see a a table which shows the ranking of the metals in terms of which are the most corrosive and which are the least corrosive. Mm. Basically, they take what's called a reference electrode, which is what this is, and, and, uh, and then they measure the voltage potential of each metal with respect to the reference electrode. And the reason that we use these is because it's a very stable electrode and it doesn't get, um, get eaten up in the process. We're going to uh, plug it into my meter and then we're going to take the other side of the meter with this lead and we're going to connect this to any kind of metal that might be in contact with water and we'll get a voltage reading off it. 
And uh, that voltage reading will first of all tell us whether the zinc is actually doing anything to protect the metal. And, and secondly, if we have more than one metal that's tied into the same bonding circuit and we get a different voltage reading, it means the bonding circuit's not working. So they should all be the same. Um, so, th so there's a couple of fairly simple tests we, well, I think, we'll see, it depends mm -hmm. how easy it is to get to things, that we can run to get a sense of um, what's going on here and what the zinc is protecting and what else might be connected to it and maybe causing problems. Um, so <laughs> let's just go toss that over the side, side. All right. and hang it about two, three feet down okay. in the water. And I'll feed the cable out. All right, about three feet. In the water. So then I have a, a, a multimeter. And in this case, we're going to be looking at DC volts. Um, we can, so we're going to plug this one into the what is effectively the positive meter lead. I'm going to put this one in the negative one. And we're going to need access to your propeller shaft okay. to start with to see if what kind of voltage reading we get off of that. Oh, I'm glad you're going in there, Steve. Yep. All right. <laughs> Let me give you that. And then you want that on the Shove prop it on the prop shaft somewhere, and we'll see what we get. You might have to scrape around a bit to get a good connection. So, right here we're getting a, a reading of 0.221 volts. That's 221 millivolts, um, which tells us, for a start, that that zinc is not protecting the prop shaft. Um, if the if the because the natural voltage of of a piece of zinc in relation to this uh, silver silver chloride half cell is a 900 plus millivolts. And we got 220. Pull it, pull it off, Steve. Okay. See, that now it goes down. Stick it back on again. And scrape it around really hard to make sure we have a good connection. Yeah, we do. So, um, um, and you still have a zinc on there? Uh, I've got a little tiny shaft zinc on the shaft. Uh, well, it's not doing anything. Okay. <laughs> So now, can you get at the uh, the coupling on the engine? Yeah. Let's do that and see what we get. All right, that's on the... Again, you have to scrape around probably. There we go, we got the same reading. So that tells us we actually have a good electrical connection from the shaft to the coupling. Can you get on the uh, transmission side? Like onto the transmission? Yes. Oh. Yep, there you go. So we got the same reading. So we've got a, you know, a good electrical path through to the transmission. Can you get on the engine block? There we go. We got the same reading. Okay. So uh, we've got basically a, a good electrical path all the way through to the engine block, um, but we're not got we're not got any uh, protection there for your prop shaft. Um, and uh, depending on whether there's a good electrical connection between the propeller and the prop shaft, which probably is because it's metal to metal, um, we, we actually don't have any protection for the propeller either. Mm, so either your zincs have been consumed or else um, they're not making a good uh, electrical contact. Yeah, that one contact. might not be making a good contact with the shaft. Yeah, um, and you know, a lot of these zincs, or, or it, it is zinc you're using and not aluminum? Yep, zinc. Yeah, a lot of them, um, don't have an embedded um, clamp in them, so as they as they get used up, the fasteners get loose. Okay. And then they just rattle around on the prop shaft, and then they don't do any good. Um, so it might be that, or it might just be that the zincs have been uh, consumed because you've been having significant um, anode loss. So. Do you want to try other metals over on back here, like the bronze floors? Yeah, yeah. Or let's get like on that? there and see what we got. All right. This is the stuffing box. Ah, so that's interesting. We got the same reading on that. Um, so your stuffing box. What what are you using for packing? Um, 
I forget. It was like Isn't the. Good, good graphite stuff? I thought so. Yeah. Yeah. So the that's the black graphite packing. I think so. That seems familiar. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's electrically conductive. Typically speaking, you're recommended not to use. The, oh, now we just went down to the, actually. Oh, that's good. I took it off. Oh, oh. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So this is yeah. This is on the on the nut on the end of the stuffing box. You see, it's within three thousands of a volt, so it's basically the same reading. So that stuffing box that's fastened to the dead wood, isn't it? Uh, yeah, to the stern post. Yep. Yeah. So for us to get a reading, um, yeah, we've got to have a, a path from. Oh, here we go. We, 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 was that on a through hole? Uh, that was on a bronze floor. Can you see? Yeah, well, you see 0.126. The bronze has a much lower natural voltage. So whatever's at, at point 0.2 a volt, if there's any circuit between them, um, would get corroded uh, to protect the, the lower voltage metals. Uh-huh. So right now you're on uh, the bronze floor for the engine beds. So that's... a. So you're on the engine bed? Yeah, on a, a bronze bracket that carries the engine bed that's attached to the bronze floors. So we've got the same reading. Because that's sense. not in contact with the water. The the engine beds are big locust beams and the there's bronze brackets that are built into the bronze floors that carry them. Okay. Yes, but is there a there's no contact with well, there is to well, to some degree because the the I mean the fasteners go through the planking and through the bronze floors to to the outside of the boat. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that's why we're that's uh, that's why we're getting that uh, water path for the engine bed. Yeah, the the engine beds and the planking it's all bolted, so the bolts go through the planks, through the frames, and through the bronze floors, which are attached to the engine so beds. So now this is interesting, because we have a path we know from the, the, from the engine through the prop shaft, because we already checked that. So now you've got the, the bronze of the engine bed is, is electrically connected through the engine and the prop shaft to your shaft sink and your prop sink. So your prop and shaft sinks are actually protecting the bolts for your engine bed. Um, and that's, that may be why you're going through sinks fairly quickly. Because you've got, uh, the, those zincs are providing galvanic protection for all of those bolts. So one of the like engine bed bolts or something must be making contact with, with one the of the water with the brackets or something somehow or another there's a <coughs> connection between your your bronze engine beds and the water what what we uh, might do now is there some place you can clip that um lead yeah onto something that's not going to uh, spin if we crank the engine Okay. Well, actually, we can do it in neutral. Let's just um, get a good yeah, connection. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's clipped on the on the stuffing box here. Yeah, and then let's crank the engine and load up the alternator and, and see let's if see any of the voltages change. That'll give us a sense of whether we're getting uh, any impact from the alternator at all. Okay, I'm going to have to do a couple things first because we... We're worried about what the alternator was doing, so everything for that got disconnected. Oh, okay. So just give me a few minutes. We got What's your we list there, Nigel? Oh, it's just a list of tests. Um, just to remind me. But oh. you know, typically I write these lists and then I forget to look at them. <laughs> so let's see, we've got the engine. We've got 222 millivolts on all of this. We've got the stuffing box. We've got 225 on that. I've already forgot what we had on the engine bed, but I think it was closer to bronze. Well, while you're in there, Steve, yeah. can you put that on the engine bed again? 128. Okay, thank you. Boat yoga. 
Yeah, it's keeping me young, making me old. I can't really decide. <laughs> and later on, we'll do a, a reading with the ohm meter, the resistance measurement, yeah. to see what sort of connectivity we've got between these various bits and pieces. So when we when we fire up the alternator, um, it, it, we're just looking to see if these voltages change. Because if, if they do, the alternator is in some way impressing some current on the system uh, and changing what's going on. Yes. Oh, I'm going to have to call Satchel because he, I think he unhooked stuff on the alternator. Because we were running into an issue that the alternator was trying to charge the batteries when the batteries were full. The wake speed was telling the alternator to stop making uh -huh. power, but the alternator was not listening. So uh, what sort of voltages were you seeing? I don't know. I have to call Satchel. Let me see if I can get him on the phone. Um, He's going to love this puzzle, too. So yeah, so uh, uh, that's basically okay, um, the wake speed controls the field current to the alternator. Um, so for some reason, it wasn't shutting down the field current. No. So and it could be a connection issue. It could be a programming issue. I mean, those wake speed controllers are fabulous, but there's an awful lot of programming involved with them. Yeah. So the batteries are actually in a pretty good state of charge. Yeah, 49%. Yeah. Well, we should be able to, if they're at 49% state of charge, we should be able to get the alternator to run fairly hard, which is good. Yeah. Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, we have Nigel with us. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah, the man, the myth, the legend is here. Um, and we are, we are working on troubleshooting stuff. And he was asking questions that I don't totally have answers to. So did we put a galvanic isolator in for the shore power? Uh, there's a shore power transformer. Oh, isolation transformer. Yeah. Wow. But, okay. But the shore power is not wired at all. Yeah, uh -huh. I mean, we haven't yes. used it at all. Yeah. So yeah. Um, cool. That was one question. And the other question was he wanted to know when the batteries are full and the alternator was running and it was trying to put power into the full batteries, what kind of volts are you seeing? Like a high 14. 147, 45, 47. Uh-huh. Um, are you, you sure the wake speed wasn't just set up that high? Yes, quite sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I even tested it with the wake speed completely disconnected. Oh, so the and internal regulator is... So it's still getting field current. Right, exactly. With yeah. Probably with uh, no regulation. With, Yes. Power, yeah. So. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, your buddy there must have disconnected the wrong wires inside the alternator. That. Uh, that that's the theory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So that's that's why we've been saying like the yeah. alternator has been kind of a black hole and yeah. has never really behaved like it should behave, and yeah. so that's why we've been thinking that that's kind of where the issue is yeah. coming from. Maybe that's just a separate issue. Well, we'll find out. In yeah. The <laughs> All right, um, we're going to fire up the diesel, and I just want to make sure that I connected everything because we need to connect the alternator and test that as well, and you were the one that disconnected that. Yeah. Um, yeah it's, just, it's just two wires, one on that negative bus extension and then the positive alternator connection to the, uh, the distribution, the electron distribution panel. All right, I think I'm missing the positive connection to the Victron distribution panel. Let me go open that up and see if I can find that. Yeah, it's on the end of that panel. It's on the forward end. Hi, Satchel. Hey, Robin. Oh, no, it's Anne. Oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and also Satchel, Nigel, Nigel, Satchel. Hi, Satchel. <laughs> nice to meet you. It's a real, this is a real highlight in my career. <laughs> oh, well, let's hope it produces some useful results. <laughs> all so, right. Well, yeah. I think we're all hooked up. Well, let's do the DC switching. Okay. And uh, see if anything changes. Okay. Um, just, you know, turn loads on and off. It 
is completely static. I mean, the only thing on at this point is the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. uh, Do you have a, a is it a water cooler? Does it have a kill cooler? Nope. So that's not it. It's all right. Sea frost is off. And then we can turn off everything. Yeah, no change in anything. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just do the inverter, turn it on, and see if that has any impact. So the switch hat on the, on the top of the inverter has to be in the on position. You know what? I bet you that's it. it. Yeah, that did it. Multi plus compact. There we go. Switch inverter only. There we go. One time's on. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Right. All right. So, we turn that back off and then we can crank the engine. See what All happens. Right. Engine start. Noise. Well, we just got 0.567 of a volt impressed current. So uh, we've got a stray current problem. With the engine on? Yeah. With the engine on. It's, yeah, let's go ahead and disconnect the alternator and see if... Um, so it's looking... Um, yeah, we've got a... It's looking like we charged up a capacitor that's now um, discharging. Just bounced back up again, and now it's down again. Okay, so <laughs> alternator positive is disconnected. Oh, and that hasn't changed things. So this is really uh, interesting, a little puzzling. Oh, I have a little theory here. <laughs> I wonder if with the vibration, we got a better connection between the, the shaft anode and the shaft. Yeah, I have a th hunch that's what's going on. We, we just improved the connection with the sacrificial anode. Oh, okay. But we'll know. If, if, if this voltage suddenly changes when we disconnect the batteries, then uh, we've got some path on the boat from the batteries through to the water. All right, I'm going to pull all the positives and then I can pull all the negatives. Well, we only need one set off, just as long as there's no connections to one or other side of the battery. Okay, so if I pull all the positives, that should do it, yeah. Okay. Sorry, what did you Ooh. just do? I just took off the last battery. Stick it back on. That's the battery, and then this is, I believe, the hard wire for the weight speed. So everything's disconnected now. Okay, can you stick them all back? <laughs> This kind of stuff is a little puzzling. Um, yeah, so that um, voltage reading is just jump oh, up again. Um, we've got something going on here. Now, what it is, I don't exactly know. <laughs> I think I should write a song about that. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want me to pull the fuses <laughs> to the bilge pumps <laughs> and all the hardwired stuff? What's that? You said you want me to pull the fuses to the bilge pumps and all that hardwired stuff? Yeah, let's do that and see what happens. So we've got the, um, the alternator disconnected right now. The positive's off. No, I think the alternator is connected still. Okay, let's go ahead and... Well, let's run it up one more time if it's still connected and, and see if we get the same result. Fire up the engine? Yeah. Let's 
certainly is an interesting <laughs> set of uh, numbers we're getting here. So now we're sitting at 0.9 of a volt. The, the natural voltage of the, of the zinc is around about a volt. Okay. Um, and which is what, if, a, if you've got a sacrificial zinc anode that's working properly, that's what you should see any time you touch a, an object that's connected to it. Okay. Um, and I mean, that makes sense. Like, I put that well, shaft zinc on before I left, and I was, like, head under the water trying to get it onto the shaft. Yeah. And so it doesn't yeah, surprise you, me it's not on there super well. But you have one on the propeller as well, no? No, that one's gone. Oh, so that's the only one. Yep. Yeah, well, I think that's what we've got going here. Okay. What I am still puzzled by is the reading we were getting off the engine bed. Can we go back and stick the clamp on? And also, put the clamp... We're, we're on the... Um, Stuffing box in a moment, aren't we? Uh, yeah. Let's go back to the shaft, and then we'll go back to the engine block, and we'll just see if we're getting the same readings off of everything. Uh, scratch it around a bit. There we go. Yeah, same. And then the uh, engine block, once again, is 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 staying the same. So it looks like we the uh, we've got no electrical connection between the block and the beds. Okay. But we do have between the beds and the water. Come back out, we'll we'll get rid of the, the half cell and we'll do some resistance tests. Now here's a really useful piece of kit. Oh nice. Except it would be better if I had it with so as I could plug it directly in. Can we get to the uh, engine block from in here? You wanna come through for the engine block, I'll put it on. And then So we've got 0.4 of an ohm is the baseline here. That's because of that long extension lead. Um, and then uh, if you put one on the engine block, and then we want to put the other one on the propeller shaft if we can. I just want to confirm that we really do have a good electrical path through here. We've got 0 0.7, 0 0.8, so that's pretty low. 0.6. Um, let's go on the um, engine bed. Because this is the odd one. Yeah. So what we're on right now is one of those bolts that goes down through the timber. Yep. Yeah. So that's yeah. So that just confirms that there is that we're not getting an electrical path through there. Okay. So that explains the the reading I'm getting off of your uh, engine bed. Um, there is a water path for the engine bed, but there's no there's no electrical connection between that and your prop shaft. Yeah, so makes... your engine bed and that water path is not going to be affecting your zinc. Um, they're basically uh. isolated from one another. So the zinc loss, my guess is it's just normal um, galvanic corrosion. They're pretty small zincs, aren't they? On the end of the very prop? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that very prop is bronze. Yep. And, uh, and then you've got the shaft is, is also going to be... Um, affecting the zinc. Potentially something going on with the alternator and, and the wake speed, but um, if you're going to change the alternator anyway, aren't you? That's my plan because I just don't trust the disconnect on that internal regulator as you can yeah. see why. <laughs> well, it, it, it's obviously not, it, it's not um, been done right because yeah. uh, the uh, it's still putting out without the wake speed connected. Yeah. So it's still got field current. Yeah. And if it's got field, and plus um, being uh, an internally regulated alternator, you're not going to have the level of control over it that you really should have with the lithium ion batteries. Yeah, which is why we got the wake speed. Yeah, exactly. So if I get a, what I'm calling a dumb alternator that isn't mm -hmm. regulated, right. then the wake speed should talk to yes. that no problem, and yep. those issues should yes. just vanish. Yep. You just want yep. an externally regulated alternator. Yep. These are about the size of the zincs. They're, like you said, they're pretty small. Well, I know that's not that small. There's a fair bit of zinc there. You know you can get aluminum now, and which lasts twice as long. Okay. Um, there's a uh, performancemetals.com. There's a really good website for anything to do with sacrificial anodes.
This is not the most artistic of drawings. I think it's beautiful. We'll, we'll auction it for your yes. audience. <laughs> but we need to do, we need to go from there to the, um, to the negative on the, on the starter battery. Mm -hmm. And then we need to see if we're getting any voltage readings. Can you tell me what we've got? millivolts it, it was directly related to the uh, as you revved up you could see the, the voltage going down and we're getting more um, impressed current on there from the uh, it's got to be coming from the alternator there's nothing else yeah okay so in theory it, when I get the new alternator and put that in that should fix. Should fix it. Should fix yeah. that short. Yeah. I mean, you've got some a whole bunch of really weird stuff going on there. associated with that. Yeah. Uh, and somewhere we've got a we've got a ground path that we shouldn't have. Um, and then you think the alternator issue is separate from the zinc going off the yes. shaft? Yes. I mean, yeah. I think your zinc is loose. The one that's on. Yeah. Yeah, because you know we and, until we uh, spun the prop and stirred everything up a little bit, we weren't getting a, a, a proper reading off the zinc. Yeah. And we are right now, if I put this back on here, uh, we're getting our 960 millivolts and we're getting it consistently. Yeah. Um, okay. So right now your zinc is functional. It's functional. Um, it wasn't earlier. Yeah. You know, when I first got on the boat and did that, we got 220 millivolts. Yeah. Um, I, like I said, the, the zinc on the prop disappeared. Mm -hmm. And then I couldn't get that because it's like a super specific one for the very prop. Mm -hmm. So I just got the shaft zinc to put on for the time being. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't surprise me that I didn't have that on super, super well. So you think that that zinc disappearing in three months was just galvanic corrosion? No, I'm thinking you've got some uh, low level um, leakage current from that old from the And you think yeah. that that's partially what fried the anode? Yeah. Uh, totally what yep. fried the anode? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. we got a shift when you when you revved up. What what did we get up to, Annie? About 90 about volts? About 100. 100 amps? 100 amps. Yeah, so we all, we got to uh, a pretty high output from the alternator, and, and, and the higher it went, the lower the the, uh, the voltage from the zinc. Okay. So what we're doing is we're, we're putting some stray current on there that's counteracting the, the actually it's flowing the current in the other direction. Um, what I can't in my own head is figure out exactly what the default current path is. Um, but we've definitely got some uh, some impact from the alternator on that whole circuit, which okay. shouldn't shouldn't be there. Yeah. I and mean, it shouldn't have any impact on it at all. If I want to run the motor and move the boat and do anything before I Well, so let's do one more yeah. then. Let's okay. disconnect the alternator again. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. And, yeah. and just try that and see what happens. See what happens. Okay. Yeah, yeah I like that. Yep. Because I'm fine with, because like I've been, I've been scared to fire up the motor and move the boat mm -hmm. and do anything yes. because yep. I don't know what's going on. Yep. Shut it down. Shut it down. So unfortunately, we got, we got the same result with the uh, with the disconnected. Yeah, um, um, and there was no output. Was there any? No output. Yeah. Not that showed so, up. Right. Not that showed up there. Um, so I, I I think what we you need to do, Steve, is we need to replace the alternator. Just yep. Clean up all of that wiring that's associated with it. Yeah. Uh, and get a, get it back to a kind of standard insulation, yeah. And then run the test again and see how that goes. See what happens. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've still got three or four because you you haven't disconnected at the alternator because we can't get at it. No. You know, you've disconnected back here in the system. I mean, so we've still got. I'm like I said, I, 
I've, we don't need the alternator, and I'd love to be able to run the boat in the time it takes to like, yeah. get all this stuff figured out. Yeah. Like, should I just go cut all the wires going to the alternator? Well, I don't know about cutting them, but how hard is it to get the wiring off? Not well, terribly you, hard. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll throttle oh. it up and throttle it down. You see, it's nothing going on now. We're back in gear. And throttle up. No. It went down a little. Alright, reverse. Do you want reverse? Yeah, throttle up. I think I know what's going on. Because um, I'm measuring on the engine block. When we're in gear, we've probably got the oil in the gears. Let's put the other one back on that bolt, on your stuffing box. Put it in gear. Put it in gear. And then rev it up. Rev it up. Okay, ready to go. Yeah. We got a very small change. Very small change. Which is um, not surprising because the shop, yeah, we're, we're good. Yeah. Because the shaft is spinning inside the packing. Right. right. Um, I think it's your packing because we got a very small change in voltage, but that's just because the shaft is spinning inside that packing. Yeah. Um, but my question is, so it's conductive, which yeah. means you need a straight current in the water in order to have it... No, uh, it's, it, what it's doing, the, uh, the graphite being high in the galvanic series table is, is creating a significant amount of galvanic corrosion. Because the further the two things are apart, your zinc is at the one end of the table, it's at the bottom, yeah. the graphite's at the top. The further they are apart, the faster you eat up the zinc. I mean, there are a lot of other issues that come into play here, but fundamentally, the further they are apart, the quicker they'll... And graphite's further than bronze or stainless? Graphite is right up there, just under gold and okay. silver. It may up be above silver and below gold. Because that's why when you said, like, you thought it was galvanic corrosion, I was pretty perplexed because yeah. everything in the boat that touches the water is either stainless steel, yeah. bronze, or copper, yeah. or lead. So I'm like, where mm. are we getting this like big difference in nobility? Right. Because all of those should be within spit and distance of each yeah. other. And then when uh, when you said stray current, I was perplexed because I'm trying to think how could we get a path that goes from positive out the zinc through the water and back to battery negative. I mean, where are we going to get that yeah. path? Uh, and, you know, for the life of me, I couldn't figure out a way of getting it. And I think the whole time we've been getting those fluctuating voltages is uh, because when the, when the engine's in gear and, and the shaft has been spinning, we've been measuring up the, on the engine block. And uh, probably we've been putting oil up into the gears. Yeah. And we don't have such a good electrical path through the transmission anyway back to the prop shaft. Okay. So then by putting it on the stuffing box, we bypassed We bypassed the, the transmission and the engine, and we went straight to there. Okay, so we've got two issues going on then. We've got the graphite packing, which when I bought the packing and went online mm -hmm. and looked, it was like, this is the cheap stuff, this is the longer-lasting, better mm -hmm. high-end stuff. So naturally, I bought the better-lasting high-end mm -hmm. stuff because it wasn't really much more expensive. Mm -hmm. And the graphite is much more noble than the bronze or the stainless steel or the zinc. Let's do one more test. And it's eating that. Well, we'll put the meter, and I can't remember if we already did this. I don't think we did. We'll put it in the uh, resistance ohms mode. Yeah. And we'll measure from the stuffing box to the propeller shaft. And that'll tell us how much of a circuit we've got between those two. Point two. Uh, yeah, see, that's a very low resistance. So we, we've got electrical conductivity between the stuffing box and the propeller shaft. And so there has to be a path through the packing because there's the, all through the, uh, the water, but you wouldn't get from the, the water zone. Well, I guess we could do an experiment. <laughs> I have actually have I've never done this before. We could get some salt water and stick the two meter probes in there and see what the, uh, What's the resistance of salt water? <laughs>
That's the one we're going to make sure. Nigel's the classroom. Midges are working. Oh, look at it. See, we've got killer ohms, thousands of ohms. Of resistance? Yep. 21 kilo ohms. And I got the two probes very close to each other. And when I touch, there we go down. The minute I separate them, we're up in thousands of ohms. So it's definitely the packing that's giving us that conductivity. Wow. Um, and probably eating up your zincs. Yeah, there could be some other stray current issue because of the way we saw the voltage change mm -hmm. when you put the engine in gear. But it's hard to conceive of um, why you're putting it in gear would generate a stray current or get onto the prop shaft. And I, I, I just don't see it. I, I'm, I think the logical explanation is what I came up with earlier that the oil in the in the, the bear in the gears and everything creates a, a little bit of resistance yeah, and changes sense, yeah. the reading. Well, and the, the real problem comes within the stuffing box itself, actually, uh, because if the zinc doesn't provide adequate protection, uh, the graphite could start interacting with the stainless steel shaft inside the stuffing box. Okay. And uh, and then you could get significant corrosion inside the stuffing box where you can't see it. Yep. Well, I'd better go home. Yeah. You need to get milk on the way. Oh, thank you. I had forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you want to? Do you want to ride to shore, or do you want to swim? Oh, I think I'll get a ride. Yeah. Nigel has much more knowledge to share with you with resources and courses available on his website, boathowto.com. Come back next week as Steve gets back to the to-do list and starts to get the boat prepped for the wintry journey southward.